Uh, hello and welcome to Operator's Lambda section. Uh, this is a uh, game at GauntletCon 2018. Um, and uh, I've got, well, I'm Kyle Thompson and I've got uh, four players here. So uh, first one might as well start out with Chris. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and your character to us? Sure. I'm Chris. I'm playing uh, Amon, she, her, uh, the infiltrator, originally from uh, Portland, Oregon. Uh, kind of the sneaky, hacky, sabotage type uh, operator. Um, and the her inner turmoil is centered around whether that she's unsure whether her brain is still really her own after having you know, gone so deep underneath cyber systems during her various infiltrations. Right, okay. Uh, and uh, next we'll continue uh, with Fraser. Cool, my character is Everest Hope, also she, her. Uh, she's indigenous Canadian and a splash, splatter specialist. So basically think uh, John Wick, but an indigenous woman with a bunch of cyberware. She's uh, always trendy. She's got like the side sweep cut of hair and she's got a bunch of tattoos on the side of her face. Um, and her inner turmoil is that she once let off a terrorist who then went on to do some major harm. And uh, that bothers her and keeps her up at night. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, she's the, the gung fu type, like, uh, like John Wick. All right. So we'll have plenty of shooty in this in this game. Um, all right, uh, now uh, Joshua, how about your character? Uh, he is a older kind of veteran. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, doctor who realized that healing people uh, did not prevent them from having mental trauma and other issues, um, and decided to mil militarize a bit, join the lambda section. And um, now he kind of regrets it, <laughs> tries to solve things peacefully. But when he doesn't, he has a giant metal arm to help him out. Right. Um, yes, a cyber punch. Uh, the yes, formidable cyber punch. Trademark. Um, and uh, Steven, uh, how about um, you? Yeah, I'm playing Ezekiel. They, them. Um, uh... Ezekiel is a specialist in security and infiltration. Um, appears humanoid with a, almost a smooth robotic outer shell. Um, very cybered up, very, very uh, uh, robotic. Um, inner tor tor turmoil is, is protecting, protecting the weak worth the loss of my humanity. This has to do specifically with cybering up uh, and, and not sure where that puts you as an individual, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, yes. Uh, so, this um, game uh, is basically uh, inspired by Ghost in the Shell, uh, and it involves an international uh, anti terrorist organization anti-cyber terrorist organization called lambda section uh so as per the rules of the game uh we are going to start in media res and medias res um uh and we want to have a first scene uh that is going to um show off how badass your characters are <laughs> right. So this is very much like it goes to the shell at the very beginning. We see the conference, right? And then Motoko jumps down and blows the hell out of everybody with her cool camo and everything, right? Uh, so we're going to want some kind of scene like that that involves everybody uh, in it um, as, as, uh, as it continues. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, obviously this is an organization that is, is against uh, cyber terrorists. Um, so we'll probably involve some kind of cyber crime or some, ki uh, some kind of cyber attack in it. 
Uh, but um, just moving over to our collage, uh, what kind of location do you think would be cool out of the sort of pictures that we have here uh, for a scene that would, would show off your skills? If it's an action flick, it could just be like a us mopping up some some folks on the freeway or something like pe people running oh. away from us. Yeah. Okay. I like freeway. Freeway is good with me. Uh, so okay. So let's say um, this is going to be a scene. Well, I want I want to be able to show off all of your competences. So um, just going to take a moment here to think that over okay so freeway scene you know it's like a 12 lane freeway right like uh tons of traffic going on um it's probably nighttime you know you can kind of imagine that that scene in in, in ghost in the shell where the major is, is taking the helicopter in to go to the, like the final confrontation uh, that kind of evening there's the city lights in the background um and uh we see you know wide shot of the freeway the traffic coming and going and then it it pans up uh and we get a uh, helicopter right with uh with bunker uh in the pilot seat there is radio chatter going on um, and we cut from the helicopter to a, um, I, I want to say like a car chase that is happening on the freeway. Um, which of you, uh, do you think is leaping from car to car? <laughs> Probably me. Probably me. <laughs> or you. Okay, we've got two candidates. Okay. Um, I don't see why not both, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, so, I think. I mean, I can also fall from the sky, as is my trademark. So that's fine. Okay, let's let's go with that. All right. So, uh, uh, Stephen, you are our volunteer for car to car hopping. Yes. All right. So I think what's going on here is you're on the freeway and um, you are chasing a uh, cyber terrorist, a criminal, a mark, someone you have to go after. Uh, and we see that they are like um, in a lead car and there are various cars between you and them and they've been hacking into the cars to uh, drive them uh, remotely so that they present obstacles between the two of you. So how is it that you're, you're navigating this problem? How are you getting uh, like on this, you know, we're, we're speeding down the freeway. There's a bunch of cars in between you and the mark. How are you navigating towards them, hunting them down? So I think that I'm hacking into uh, nearby drones these mm -hmm. are going to be delivery drones or news drones or something like that. Mm -hmm. And basically, as I'm leaping from car to car, we see, you know, a loud, you know, and heavy metallic chunk on the trunk of a car. And it, the front end kind of lifts up mm -hmm. and it kind of moves in slow motion and then push back off. Mm -hmm. And the drones are tracking where that vehicle is. Mm -hmm. so I can leap from the vehicle. But at some point... I think there's too far, you know, there's not a vehicle in place. And mm -hmm. I think that's whenever I start using drones to step through to get to a higher vantage point to then go after the lead vehicle. Okay, so this is like vehicle to vehicle. And then we've got like an aerial drone that like swoops down. You grab onto it and it like pulls you up on, on top of like a semi or something, right? Like, yeah, yeah you've got a vantage point. Uh, you can see the mark down below you. Um and I think at this point, probably uh, Eamon, uh, there, there's, there's something you do in terms of hacking to disrupt what the, the colonel's been doing in terms of remote ma manipulation mm -hmm. of the vehicles. What, what does that look like? Um, so we see 
like I think the shot is something like the camera rotates and the mm -hmm. scene flips upside down mm -hmm. and Amon is latched onto the underside of this freeway overpass. Nice. Um, and her like biomechanical fingers, like it's part of the part of her body that's been modded, mm -hmm. has these like tendrils going through the concrete. And the concrete mm -hmm. is this like, weird, you know, digital electrical concrete that like the cars talk to each other on. and there's this whole like yeah, like, like why don't going. why don't we like you know make this even more future tech where it's like the whole freeway is covered in like solar panels and stuff, right? Yeah. Like it's in the pavement, uh, but you just see you just like rotates and you see her latched onto the bottom of the freeway. Yeah, and then you get this like zoom in flash as she just inserts herself into the freeway network mm -hmm. and rams like head first into um, their cyber operative that's been hacking these cars and controlling them. Okay, um, so this is it, at the digital level, you're attacking this p specific person? Yeah, like they, they were out, like they were sending out their, you know, their signals to control the other cars. And I'm just like jumping in to have this like cyber fight, basically. Yeah, so you're pretty much like going for a tackle kind of situation, yeah. right? And, and we just we see like, you know, in the, the sort of cyber depiction of the freeway, like these like uh, bursts of data, like uh, spilling here and there across the freeway. And then it's like cuts back to the, you know, the, the physical world. And we see like the, the operative, like freaking out, like they, they you know, their, their face is all in a rictus and like, you know, they're being assailed. Um, so I think at this point, uh, probably, uh, we'll cut back to uh, um, Ezekiel. Uh, what do you think you've done from your vantage point to uh, get a hold of these these uh, terrorists now that they've lost control of their their vehicles? So I think that I've uh, at this point I've probably thrown um, little trackers yeah um, onto the vehicle that are going to allow the others to pinpoint this vehicle. Mm -hmm. And while, you know, while I'm throwing them, I'm running along the top of the semi towards the front. I think it's an automatically driven semi. So yeah. There's no cab in front. It's just a big trailer. Nice. And um, once I have a good pinpoint, I think I will jump for that vehicle. Okay. So you're going to jump onto their vehicle from off on top of this thing. So you, you yeah. jump on onto the vehicle um and i think that I, actually you know what i'm gonna probably get you to make a roll here uh, i think i think this could be an interesting point to to do that so when you make a roll in this game uh you just go over to roll 20 and uh type uh slash r space 4 df uh, capital f and that will give you four fate dice just do a little. Nice. Okay. All right. So that that's looking pretty good. What uh, what do you have in? Uh, I think this is probably move. I want to say. Uh, you've got a one. So okay, you got a success. Uh, and on top of that, you have an extra plus. So that means that you, your margin of success is increased. Um, so you're going to like get right on top of them. Uh, I think like you're like, you know, this is probably like, I think we get the impression that there's, there's probably a number of people in this vehicle. So it's probably like an SUV or something like that. Um, and you're just like right on top of the roof, you're cybered out body. We see the roof like dent in as you, as you hit uh, on top of it. Uh, what do you do next? So I think um, all the other vehicles I've jumped to, the, they've smashed in, they flipped up. This one, we can tell how solid it is because only the roof kind of dents in a little bit. Yeah, right. I think like we might armor. see it from the weight come down and probably scrape the, the pavement a little bit and you see some sparks fly up. I think okay. at this point, um, let's see. What do I want to do now that I'm here? 
I think that um, I'm going to um, start. I'm going to go. I'm going to go in through the back window. I'm going to just, you know, SUV is here, and I'm going to smash the back window and just flip in. Okay, so you smash in. You're like right next. We get that like close up shot of you right next to one of the people. It's probably the the. It's probably the uh, the guy who's been uh, had his cyber brain messed up. Uh, what do you do with him? Um, is this a guy we? So what do we want to do with the cyber brain guy? Uh, I don't know. You could capture or a, kill him. Okay. This <laughs> it's is like a, this, this is a, like this is the, the guy that previously got hacked uh, by. Um, uh, there's, there's those uh, restraining bolts in the universe where they like put it on their their neck and then they yeah. like pass out or whatever. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. The interface where you just like hit them and then they they just go limp. Um, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we we see like you know you jump in right next to this guy, you get the shot of the, your two faces, and you like reach around and and hit him, goes limp. The two uh, remaining uh, terrorists in the front. I think they look back. They see uh, what's going on. There's like this look of terror in their eyes. You can see the whites. Um, one of uh, the um, terrorists like uh, grabs the goes across, grabs the wheel, does a swerve, um, and we come up next to like uh, I think it's probably a a car. Um, Let's go with the wheel, uh, and then just like opens up the door and jumps. Like you can see, like their cyber legs like activate, uh, and they jump out of the car over onto another vehicle, um, rip off the door, throw out the driver, and then just like speed away. Uh, so you're stuck with like the two remaining people in that car. At the same time, this is when the helicopter is going to start to swoop in. So, what does this look like for Bunker? Uh, I, I think Everest Hope is in the helicopter with me at this point, probably. Yeah. Uh, and well, um, actually, I, I was I was thinking I was idea. hoping to petition Kyle for something that is very. <laughs> 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 uh, I was thinking, what if there was two vehicles and one of them is like a truck, and maybe the truck is ahead of this one, and I'm in the middle of the road in front of it, and then I want to do some shit with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like, um, okay, go for it. <laughs> I will say no. <laughs> so my my whole idea, I want to prime my my crab maga, but I don't want to uh, be too uh, flagrant about it. So what I was thinking is, maybe they're just like, oh crap, this lady's in the middle of the road, right? Mm -hmm. And so they just accelerate at me, and I jump at them, and then I do like a jump right before they are about to hit me and I fly through the window into mm -hmm. the back of the truck. Yeah. And then it's kind of like the Graviton cleric scene where it's completely black and they're shooting. Yeah. But they just hear them getting messed up and stuff. But okay. I would totally understand if that's a role. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this was, this is the same vehicle uh, that Ezekiel was in. Is, is that, is that what's going on here? Uh, well, it could be. Um, for it to work, it would need to be a vehicle where I could like stand up maybe or, or something like that. So that's why I was thinking it could be a truck. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, into it. All right. Uh, so you jump up, uh, things go <laughs> black. There's a lot of gunfire. There's the one remaining car with the lead. Hel helicopter swoops in. What, do you, what are you going to be doing here, uh, Bunker? Um, I think I'm like flying car level with the helicopter. Um, yes. And my my whole um, idea here is to give Ezekiel space to like jump onto the helicopter and then onto the car that the, yeah. the driver just jumped out of. And um, maybe I'll like be firing at the car with my pistol as I'm flying the helicopter or something badass like that. Right, for sure. Like, uh, yeah, maybe maybe there's um, uh, like, uh, oh, uh, what if there's like a um, like an auto-mounted like uh, minigun or something on the helicopter 
there's yes. just, like spraying bullets and it's like going all around. There's like the cars <laughs> back and forth. Uh, and then, yeah, we see uh, Everest just like leap up onto the one of the um, uh, supports of the helicopter and then swing across the other and jump onto the car. Um, and uh, I think we get like a, a, a shot of the lead, like their face, like looking up. Uh, like seeing all this, like swerving around, and like um, you can probably get like a shot of their vision. Like it's all cybered out. Like they're trying to avoid the the, the tracking of of the gun that's been firing at them, and then just like through the windshield or something. Like Everest comes in, and they, like you see the the gun in their face, and then poof, it goes black. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so I think I think we've sufficiently established that you're all a bunch of badasses at this point. Uh, <laughs> um, that's that's good stuff. All right. Uh, okay. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna keep moving here. Uh, maybe do one more scene before a bio break. Um, I think. The next thing that happens is let's 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 jump to the villain introduction. I think um, let, let's let's go there. Um, so I think we cut to a structure. Um, it is let's see yeah i think it's it's this it's this first image up here we're in this big tall building in the middle of some metropolis right like maybe this is a maybe this is somewhere in like uh you know chicago future chicago or something <laughs> um and uh this is going to be the Lambda section headquarters, right? Uh, and, and it's it's going to cut into uh, uh, a um, briefing room, darkened briefing room. Uh, I think some of you are probably present physically at the briefing. Others of you are pr present digitally. Who thinks who thinks they're there in the uh, physical form? I think Bunker would be for sure. Okay. Yeah. Like standing there in this in this darkened briefing room, like you can see in like a uh, Ghost in the Shell two, right? Um, yeah, just like leaning up against the wall, kind of. Yeah. And then, uh, who do you think's are there, like digitally? I could probably be there physically too. I'm okay. just trying to figure out how to stop screen sharing. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're in this briefing digitally. I can tell you that. Uh, there you go. So I think Ezekiel is probably there digitally. I think he uh they're probably getting worked on and uh, -huh. uh is in the briefing room digitally while a doctor's working on him or a mechanic is working on him. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So it's like we have uh like we'll have a uh, sort of cross-cutting between the briefing when Ezekiel is uh speaking with like a digital avatar. And then, like, back to the um, doctor working in like the cyber lab on uh, their body. That's uh, pro probably the opening sequence of the whole movie, right? With the credits rolling. And all yeah, that. nice. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Ezekiel's getting the the full uh, work over, and we've got lots of uh, cool music going on, uh, cutting in with the credits. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, and uh, yeah, so finally. Uh, how about um, Eamon? Eamon is definitely there in person. Okay. All right. So we've got uh, three present in person, one present digitally. Um, and I think that there is... Uh, let's, let's see. Uh, which of the characters in this collage do you think would be cool to have as like your commanding officer? Or another, if you if you have something else in mind. To be honest, I kind of like Eamon as the commanding officer because they don't know if their mind's their own. 
<laughs> that makes their influ- their inner turmoil all of our inner turmoil turmoils. Well, I, like I, okay with that. I, I like that pretty pretty. Uh, yeah, I like that a, a lot. Um, I, I just mean the person who's giving you orders, though, uh, yeah. in this immediate situation, uh, giving you a well, briefing. Let's go maybe with the bottom left. What do people think? Yeah, I was thinking one of the bottom two, so that's more for me. Cool. All right. So yeah, white so white-haired badass, white-haired yeah. badass, uh, and I think this is like a thing where it's probably like in the setting similar to um, Ghost in the Shell, where like your cyber brain and your cyber body are like kind of interchangeable. So people's relationships to their bodies is a little bit more fluid. Um, in terms of like age and that kind of thing than uh, we have in in this world because uh, we're all tied to our bodies. Um, so it's like, yeah, the person giving the briefing looks very young, uh, has this kind of cool cyberpunk look to them, uh, to, to her. Um, but uh, that doesn't really indicate anything as to their actual age, right? It could be could be any any age. Um, uh, yeah, totally. Um, so, uh, she's like talking and we're seeing, you know, uh, sort of holographic images, uh, appearing in this dark briefing room. Um, and she says to you, um, good job on your last mission. Uh, you took out all of the targets with a minimum of property damage. Flashy, but effective. That's what I expect from you. Um, I'm sure the Minister of Propaganda can frame an ad. And uh, and, and uh, she says, uh, well, that's not what we're here for. You know that. Um, and uh, so I think she says, uh, I'll cut to the chase. Have you ever heard of Jormungandr? I'm familiar with the word. Yes, but well. I have a feeling there's more meaning to it in this case. Yes, it's the terrorists that you eliminated seem to be connected to a larger coordinating group. Uh, someone who's giving them resources and orders. Uh, someone who has been establishing terrorist cells across the globe. We think that person belongs to this organization. Jormungandr, and like there's like you know some stylized logo that shows up that's got like this serpent on it and and stuff like that in the background. And then uh, like flashback to the guys that we fucked up that had that somewhere like a tattoo or something. Right. <laughs> totally. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, she says, um, "We think." We have reason to believe that this organization is connected to all of you personally. So who who was it do you think that was on your team and has gone MIA since interrogating Alexis Thorburn? Who do you think like that is? Our previous, like, commanding officer. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, like, yeah. So this this commanding officer um, is like a new one, right? It's been brought in as a replacement. Your new, your new, new handler, um, and oh yeah. So it's it's. So I, I'm guessing this, like, I think for sort of poetic or cinematic effect, it makes sense if this previous officer was also a woman uh, because we could, we could have like the image of her come up in hologram and like your new commanding officer, let's call it, let's call her uh, Blake. 
Blake walks through that image towards you, right? <laughs> yes. Um, and how about if uh, the former officer is the bottom right woman? Okay. Have a picture of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, good plan. Oh yeah. Yes. Um, who does anybody have a name for her? last name? A last name? Yeah. Uh, Rain? Rain? Okay. Yeah. So we've got Blake and Rain. I'm gonna I'm gonna write these down on our collage right now. For some reason, my mind always goes to the first name for that uh, at Severus, <laughs> like Harry <laughs> Potter, <laughs> Severus Rain. <laughs> And I'll just copy paste. Cool. All right. So uh, yeah, so we get the the image of of, of like Colonel Rain, uh, and Blake steps through it, says, and like takes a look at all of you to like see your reaction. So you haven't you haven't seen Rain in quite a while. I think it's 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 been like a year that she's gone black. What, what, what do you like? So, okay. Who of you, which of you do you think is like the most closely connected to rain? And like, what's the flashback we get uh, about that? I could see Eamon like debriefing. Mm hmm with rain maybe one of the times when uh an infiltration was like particularly mentally subversive mm. okay so this is like a um like kind of a, a mission debrief but also kind of a bit of a counseling session to like get you centered yeah or like working through what the fuck just happened mm -hmm. during a mission yeah 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 okay great um so do you think this is just like your standard kind of uh briefing room or what kind of what kind of set do we have here um yeah i think it's standard briefing room and it's like after everyone else left and we're just sitting on the floor like cross-legged Mm. Like there's not there are no chairs in the briefing room. There's just like the the hollow table display, yeah. and we're just like, we need to sit down for this, and we're just like sitting cross legged on this like incredibly Spartan floor. Yeah, and I I think I'm gonna borrow something from the uh, borderless uh, exhibition in Tokyo that I went to. Uh, like probably there are like these uh, these waves being displayed uh on the walls around you that are going back and forth as a sort of like calming thing that it is done in these kind of debriefs um and then like i think there's probably like a moment of um there's probably a moment of aemon like looking away and down uh yeah no i think they're stylized i think they look kind of like um you just like see the white caps but it's all displayed in like that kind of um uh, orange color, that sort of like sepia color that they use all the time in uh, in Ghost in the Shell too, um, and uh, I think we get like a shot of like Eamon talking and then like looking down into the side, you know, and then like looking up again, and we get a shot of uh, um, Rain catching catching her eyes, uh, you know, just to like show the the intimacy between the two characters, and then cut back to Eamon's face in the real world, right? Looking, looking shocked, like, oh, she's, she's shown up. And uh, Blake says, uh, yes, uh, my predecessor. We found her and like get some sort of like satellite photos, uh, local shots like taken by drones, that kind of thing um, of rain. Uh, she's 
wearing like more like civilian clothes than she normally would, uh, trying to blend in and see her coming and going. There's probably a shot of her from like um, outside a uh, or like getting into an air, like a private aircraft at some point, um, something like that. Uh, and, um, she's, and, and Blake says, um, we think, we think she's gone rogue. We think that Jormungandr is her plan, her organization. At this point, at a meta level, do we think that, like, do does she think that she's been mind jacked, or is she trying no, to? No, uh, I think I think oh, they got okay. no idea because she's she's uh, a villain, right? She can outsmart them, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just like, oh, bitch turned, kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, and then and, and uh, looks around at all of you, sort of like takes in the room, and says. Um, your orders are to bring her in for questioning or to take her out if necessary. There's no way she's not going to see this coming. I mean, she trained half of us. Kind of like look around the room, you know, or at the holograms. Yeah, and uh, and I think Blake says, uh, yeah, she knows you, but... You know her as well. That's her weakness. Use it. Get to her. Um, and any other reactions you want to bring in there, or should we cut to the next scene? I think we're going to cut. Let's cut. Okay. Uh, bio break. People are good. Let's, yeah, let's bio, do it. Uh, bio. Five minutes. Okay. See you soon.
Kyle, did you notice that I'm playing Everest Hope? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> yes, I totally noticed. This was wonderful. Oh, yeah. man. Great. Uh, I like it. Cameo appearance. Yeah. Especially if you guys get into a fight or something with her, and you can just be like, all right, she's scary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally. Oh, yeah. No, I'm so This is just that. a preview of uh, I, 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 Sunday's game. Yeah, and like it works perfectly with inheritance, right? Because it could be, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years in the future. Um, yeah. Uh, cool stuff. Um,. So, everybody is back, yes. Uh, okay, so now, um, as a director, I'm supposed to sort of, like, lean off of, like, hard framing myself a little bit and, like, start to turn things over to you uh, for the um, specific scene framing. Uh, generally speaking, the character that frames the scene will also call when the scene should cut. Um, so you come in with a scene concept and then cut it where you need to. Um, I'm just there to sort of help ask questions and you know address roles things and play the opposition. Um, so according to our schedule here, we're supposed to move down to character downtime. So I think this could maybe be um, sort of following the format of like a Ghost in the Shell movie. This could be like, you know, you have to get to her personally and then we can kind of cut to like legwork sort of like personal reflections, um, investigation, all that kind of stuff uh, could be here. And it's it's noted that this is a chance to prime your specials um, and to introduce your inner turmoil. So you don't need to recover any stress because you haven't spent any yet. Um, but uh, if you want to you know, show off your training or something like that, uh, or your background, uh, sorry, your... Um, uh, your discipline, uh, that is a thing you can do uh, in this in this opportunity. So is there anybody who would want to like frame a scene? I wanted to kind of be related to this idea of getting uh, to Rain, right? Like using your personal connections to get to her. Uh, that's, that's mainly what I'm interested in at this point. What's the angle you're going to work? So I will I will I will start picking on you uh, because I'm, I'm I'm GM so I'm gonna I'm director I'm gonna do that um, so I think it makes sense because we didn't we didn't see a lot of Ezekiel in the last scene so I think I like to go to Ezekiel um, what does downtime look like for Ezekiel? And how is this related to sort of working that personal angle with Rain? So I think what this looks like is we see a kind of a jury um, street scene. And Ezekiel is walking down the street and has on gloves and kind of a hood that comes down, mm -hmm. wearing a long jacket. And um, then the camera kind of zooms in and you see underneath the hood um, lights that mm -hmm. are lit up that are moving quickly that then there's kind of a shift in the camera. Mm. So we're kind of looking through Ezekiel's eyes. Right. And what's going on there is more like a heads up display. And then we see several drones in the area mm. and they're following an informant. Okay. But they're doing a neat, you know, this is a delivery drone and it's following for a short period of time. And then it passes by a news network zone drone. And then this one goes off to make its delivery and this one picks up and you see kind of this target, uh, icon move from drone to drone as uh, the informant is being tracked so that they don't know. Okay, great. And, and uh, how does this? Uh, so you're 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 uh, absolutely uh, priming your uh, drone manipulation control here, so you can check that off uh, on your on your sheet. Uh, it's it's ready to go should you need to use it. Um, and uh, I guess I, I'm kind of interested at this point, 
like maybe is there is there something we see that sort of like gets to this idea of um Ezekiel's like troubled relationship to their their personhood uh like is there a moment of reflection is there something that happens that that would uh would bring that up I think so um so I think as uh, I, so I had this idea that as we're looking through the heads up display, there's this whole list of um, the informant and the relationship between them and the uh, what's the villain's name again? Uh, Rain. Rain. Um, go, uh, you know, Rain. Here's the information. Possible contacts. This informant is one of them tracking them, and then a next informant on the list, and then the camera kind of shifts back out. So you don't see that heads up display anymore. Mm -hmm. And you see, you know, again, the, the lights have been moving faster and faster. And then it comes out the comes out from underneath the hood. And you see someone notice the lights and become startled and kind of back away with a look of revulsion on their face. Right. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a uh, pedestrian, like gives you a bad look, startled, walks by. And maybe just like the side shot of uh ezekiel like standing there as people continue to pass them by um sort of highlighting their alienation exactly and i think that the person who startled i think that uh they're a mother and they have a young child oh so nice they notice ezekiel they step in between the two and cross the street to go to the other side right and then it's like ezekiel carries on with their work kind of thing yeah and i think that's kind of noted and yeah. then moves on. Right, right. Yeah, it's just like a quiet moment, right? Um, okay, I like it. Um, so yeah, so you're you're tracking rain. Uh, why don't we? Um, why don't we get you to do a surveil uh, surveil roll here? Um, so you got a two in that. Okay. Minus two. Okay, so that is a straight up failure um, with an extra or like uh, wait, that's two complications. Um, okay, so I think that um, oh, we lost somebody. Hopefully, it'll be back soon. <laughs> uh, hope I, I I think that um. Hmm. Maybe it maybe it's it's the case that Ezekiel goes back to their surveillance work and finds first that the informant has eluded them and then like looks back and the child that the mother was protecting has is just like standing there and like staring at you. Um and um, I think it starts to go like it starts to go a little bit like weird and multicolored in the in the HUD. Um, and uh, you notice that you are being ghost hacked. Um, so maybe that child was never actually there, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, I think this would be a bit of of harm you would take. Uh, uh -huh. So you can you can spend stress to to overcome that if you uh, choose mental or physical and and say how it's um, it's helping you to to power through this situation. Um. So I think in this case, uh, this would represent mental stress. And I think you see the, again, in the HUD, you see the child's image. It kind of went multicolored. Mm -hmm. And um, then you see, you know, a zoom in on the face. And then you see it kind of pin, you know, it's kind of this, it's being pinned up in the corner. Yeah. So this is uh, representative of a stress that, 
um, Ezekiel has experienced and that they will continue to focus in on and be aware of. Okay. Okay. So, so how it, much stress? Uh, it would be uh, one stress you'd spend for one this. Stress. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, all right. So, yeah, it's pinned up in the corner. So you've sort of isolated the problem, right? This is the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. All right. Uh, keeping the lookout for, you know, that happening. Yes. Uh, and, okay, so I want to cross cut into a different scene. How can we work this child into it? Oh, oh, I I have an idea. Okay. Uh, it'll it'll prime my my thing to my inner turmoil. <laughs> uh, so I think we we cut to like um, me back at my apartment, and I imagine it very Spartan, like. Uh, and there is something playing that looks like the news, but it's like a re a recording of the op that I blew, and I mm. watch it because I'm I'm like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the audience get clues cl gets clued into it slowly because the camera zooms in on like the top left corner, and it's the date, and it's like three years ago or something like that. Right? Sure. Yeah. And the the meaningful parts of it, anyway, is that um, I like let x person go or whatever and then later on there actually is some news recording spliced in where they had like went on a killing spree they probably like blew up a shopping mall or something and it has like some of the dead people and there's children so this is this is like on kind of on repeat sort of thing right I think I, even if I hadn't watched it all of the time, I'm watching it now to remind me of the things that I need to do to get at Rain uh, and sort of like close off any emotional connection that I had to do with it. Mm -hmm. And so that I can like, attack the, the problem. And attacking the problem wise, I was thinking maybe uh, Rain had given us like a sort of dead drop location that if she was ever. Uh, compromised or dead or something like that that we would go to. Okay. Um, and if somebody wanted in on that scene, then that's a, a thing that they could do too. Yeah, and I, I think that the, the cross cut that we do get is probably like in that video um, that you're watching. Uh, like the girl is also there, right? Like it's like cut in on the girl in a different scene that zoom out, we can see the video and you're watching it sitting there watching it and maybe turn away to go and talk to somebody else in the group. So who, who do you think, uh, who thinks that they would be in on this idea of going to this, uh, this, this black site, this drop zone to see rain or to try to find rain. I'm cool with it being Bunker. I think he's got a much more physical presence than yeah. a digital presence. So, okay. Um, so I think we probably, is it cool if we get a scene of, uh, of uh, Bunker and Everest uh, in the helicopter going towards the, uh, the site? Uh, d definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so what is what does this look like? The he helicopter itself. Uh, or... The helicopter. Like, what's the atmosphere? Like, what you know? Uh, it's probably nighttime again still because it's cyberpunk. So <laughs> it's always dark. <laughs> I, th I think the the helicopter is super. You know, futuristic. It's probably got wings that have um, rotors in them, that kind yeah. of thing, and some like booster jets on the back, so it can do um, even easier like vertical takeoff and landing and all that good stuff. Um, and um, Bunker's totally uh, playing music. This is like a, a Vietnam, Korean War kind of like. <laughs> uh, not necessarily Ride of the Valkyries, but that type of thing, and. Um, I imagine Everest Hope is either really into it or totally not into it. Um, but yeah, we're 
we're bunkers jamming one way or another. And okay. um, whenever he's not on mission, he tries to be completely off mission to kind of break that barrier in his in his mind. Um, so yeah, I, I say we fly over to like the train station or whatever it is, and then of course there's multiple landing pads. Yes. Uh, for, for VIPs, and um, <laughs> we uh, <laughs> we commandeer one of those. Right. Yeah. Like there's like a, there's like some radio chatter of like, Oh, this is like an unscheduled landing and you know, bunkers just like, you know, gives some like a Lambda section access code. And they're exactly. like, Oh, of course we'll clear the, clear the landing pad right away. Right. Um, yeah. Cool. So, uh, what, what is, uh, Everest, uh, doing in the, in the copper is like you come down. Uh, onto the landing pad. Um, I'm probably like being very meticulous about. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll just be kind of mean and try to trigger <laughs> uh, trigger bunkers in our turmoil. And what I'm doing is like have all my weapons on the backseat, and I'm cleaning them and making it and like loading them and making it clear that like I expect to put a bullet in somebody basically <laughs> yeah and i think we get like that kind of there's a digital rear view mirror up at the top where i can see like a vid cam of the back and bunker keeps like glancing at his radio display and glancing at that and glancing back and he's like clearly nervous about it like come on <laughs> yeah and like does bunker uh does he have any um weapons on him at the moment um uh I think he carries a sidearm and that's it. Um, okay. So he's, he's got his cybernetic arm and then just a pistol. It's, it's uh -huh. very much uh, the Togusa and Bato situation. Going <laughs> yeah, <on>. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Do you, I'm do totally you okay have, with that. Do you have something that if it was a movie or a TV show that the audience would know that you're a pacifist on you? Like that signals the audience that you're a pacifist? Um, that's a good question. Maybe instead of a as a, a pistol, it should be like a taser or like a beanbag shotgun or something. And it's very obvious that it's like it doesn't shoot bullets, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because of the design of it. Um, and then I probably also have like my chest armor has like a red cross on it or something like that. So it's like medic type of uh, labeling. Yeah, mm, I like that. And maybe like when we sit down, then maybe I say like when the time comes, you're going to need more than bean bags, right? <laughs> uh, if I let you go home. in first, that's that's definitely the way it's going to go. Let me do the talking. If you if you think that words can solve problems, we'll see what happens. I was thinking maybe the the sight to do a reoccurring visual motif is maybe like maybe it's like a nightclub or or some place that has waves right like maybe the name mm. of the place is waves or something like that or the building has the waves as well like it was some kind of visual signaling that's that's where we need to go or something yeah i like that that like i think it's it's probably where we you know we see you both get out of the helicopter and then it's like you're in the building and we get that like fisheye lens shot of you like going walking down the hallway and like uh on either side there is like a vid display of or like almost like a holographic display of like waves superimposed on the walls and like um uh, we we get uh like as you're walking down the hallway it's like walking towards the camera all right and uh we can see on the on the wall there's like uh like stylized letters that spell out waves um as like it's like coming into view of the camera as it as it comes back as it tracks backwards um and uh i think there's probably like a um and like an android that greets you at the at the door um and and uh and asks for your id uh, what what do you present as ID? I think I make a great show of deferring to Bunker, and I'm like, 
Words, right? I mouth it to you. I'm like, words. Uh, yeah, and I'll pull out like the the fanciest digital pad thing mm-hmm. and just kind of like hold it up to the Android and be like, this should get us. This should get us what we need. Yeah, and I, I think it's like, um... oh, I think the uh the android is probably like built like <laughs> probably built into like a a pool by the the entrance uh and it's like a like a mermaid um <laughs> and uh looks at the id and says uh ah of course uh, please go in doctor um <laughs> that's probably like what <laughs> like look down at the cross <laughs> and uh, maybe i even say because it gets and we need some philosophy i'm like is do you think that your souls worth saving and then as we're walking i like cock the shotgun <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i say thank you to the android and maybe uh everest hope is like oh come on it's it's just an android or whatever <laughs> like being super nice to all the machines yeah right of course and like the the and and like the android is sort of like impassive when you when you uh thank them right so um and then i I think we get like the shot of you like walking through these like sort of narrow restaurant um hallways and like it's as another tracking shot like but, but like very sort of like claustrophobic and up on you and like we see like in the background there's like maybe this is a place of sort of like sliding doors to the different rooms and we can see like dinner guests and stuff who are like looking out the door at you and see like your arm to the teeth and stuff and just like closing the doors and looking really nervous. Um, and uh, it's like, it's like a long tracking shot, like probably like, you know, like a few minutes long of like you walking through this place, uh, just like building up the tension uh, and then we see the like the VIP like you know like restricted access um, and like maybe there's even um, like a little bit of dust on the door handle or like something like that that indicates like this place has been reserved and has not been used for like a very long time, right? Um, so which of you is going to go in first? Uh, I think I'll um, politely ask Everett, uh, Everest to open the door so I can go in first. Sure, so I, I kick it open. <laughs> you don't have the access codes or anything? Oh, yeah, baby. Hey. <laughs> um, hmm. I like the idea that um, Everest actually leans back to kick it in and Bunker like uh, stops. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, or even like, wave the fancy ID. Yeah, like okay. maybe I'm actually about to follow through with the kick and then the door like slides open because you do the thing and then you can admonish me or something, right? <laughs> um, yeah, nice. So the door slides open and like you're kind of off balance. Uh, and like we see Everest look inside the room and the room's like, like very fancy, very like low lighting, very fancy upholstery and stuff. Um, a real VIP lounge, but, uh, almost completely empty, uh, of, of people we, we see on the inside, um, probably like as you walk in, like the camera turns and like on your flank, uh, that girl that we saw earlier is like sitting on top of the arm of a couch. Um, and uh, she says, uh, oh, hello. Uh, this you... is in the room? Yeah, in the room. Yeah, so Everest has like walked into the room cautiously. The girl calls out from her flank. Uh, I oh, think I like didn't recognize her, but do you? Oh yeah, I like tense the fuck up. <laughs> 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 I've seen that footage probably like meticulously played uh, at yeah. least a few times, right? So uh, I just like uh, tense up and then um, try to like visibly shake it off and 
say uh, with like, I think I smile and we get the sh shot on my uh, mouth and I've got like canines showing, right? And I say parlor tricks. Um, and like, I think it's like at this point that she stands up off of the arm of the couch and like, uh, I think it's like she takes her hand and does that like card trick where you just like spread out the whole deck in your head, like the magic trick, uh, and, and like, um, smiles and then puts the cards away again. Uh, what do you, what do you do, uh, Bunker? Uh, are you, um, uh, a caterer, curator? And, uh, caterer? looks up at you and says, uh, I thought doctors were supposed to be smart. <laughs> oh, I think Hope has to like, you know, give me a playful uh, hit on the arm for that one. Um, I, I think I just give you the look that I always give you. <laughs> yes. Like, set me off the leash, right? <laughs> like, like we, can, we, we can look at the data. You know, I, we give it to the nerdy people back at Lambda. They scan it or whatever. It doesn't matter if I shatter and blow it up. <laughs> yeah, you've probably got your like gun up already, and I'm like, okay, just a second, like lower that down for just one more second. Um, I think I'm just gonna ignore the girl for a second and kind of case the room and, and maybe you know chat with her while I'm looking around. Sure. Um, yeah. You know. Um, so there are like no perception checks or anything like that in the, in this game. So what do you find that reminds you of rain? Um, I think maybe she has her like previous to Lambda section military uniform and dog tags and like service pistol and whatever, all that stuff. Uh, okay. Um, oh, so like her, yeah. her fallback kit. Or like her, her name's like printed on there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're like inadvertently priming the villain stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yes, she's a very dangerous person. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's like some medals, some, some old uh, uniforms, some, some weapons, you find them. And, and um, I think, uh, I think the, the, the girl's like walking up to you, um, like behind you and continuing to talk to you. And she says, um, uh, find anything interesting in there, doctor, anything sentimental? Um, you know it too much sentimentality, but that's what us, uh, humans are for, right? <sighs> well, you tell me. Sometimes I think you could be something more than that. Other times I think you don't even manage that much and like looks over at Everest. <laughs> and I think the whole time I'm kind of like trying to find, you know, in like future stuff when they, the future stuff doesn't work. They try those like obsequious commands like lights, dim mm -hmm. light on or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> yep. I'm like, I'm like function state purpose <laughs> like all that <laughs> stuff of like she go to talk she's she can't be more than just like a like something serving a function here right right um and i think she says uh well it seems to me like you're hoping to get some control over this situation person you're looking for she's gone and you're out of luck. Um, and like, I think she like throws the cards on the ground. Um, and it's like the door like shuts and locks and you're inside. Um, and she's like staring at you and we like, see out in the hallway like all of the dinner guests start to go like bug-eyed and stuff as they get ghost hacked and like they're starting to like uh 
pull out like steak knives and this kind of thing and just like start to walk towards the VIP room. Uh, so I, I want to see I want to see a different scene uh, with some other characters and we'll cut back to the you know explosion of violence over there. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think um, what. What is Eamon up to? Um, yeah. Eamon is back at HQ. Okay. Practicing. And I think the cut is like this hard, this like fast, hard cut. And we just see Eamon just incredibly hard, just slap herself across the cheek. Oh, wow. Okay. And then just, like, we see her face on camera, and it's just, like, just, like, super confused for a second. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and, like, where is this? Where are you? Like, in, like what's, in, the, what's the room? I'm in one of, like, the training halls. Uh, and I have this set up where there's this sequence of, like, dummies and, like, electronics around it. Mm -hmm. And on the end is one of these, like a picture, like a, a fancy mannequin mm -hmm. with like articulated joints at the other end. <laughs> and then we just see Eamon like focus again, shove her hand to the floor. Yeah. And we see like this crackling energy go across the room. And then we see the mannequin slap itself so hard its head falls off. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Um, and Eamon just like gets up, breathes, walks over, picks the head off the floor, puts it back on the mannequin, like spins it back into place, <laughs> like adjusts it so that it's on straight, goes back, and we just see this happen like a few times more. Um, yeah. And I, I think there's like a point where the next slap is about to happen and then you get the notification that the other two are in trouble. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, I think that um, it's like an interruption, right? Like it's, it's yeah. on your vision or something uh, that there's a crisis. Um, oh, ooh. I think it interrupts me as I'm about to accidentally slap myself again. Oh yes. Nice. So this is this is me mixing up what I'm doing um, in someone else's physical space. Yeah. And myself. So this yeah. is my inner turmoil coming right. up. Right. Right. While right. I'm pr trying to practice my my hacking. Yes. Uh, but it so like interrupts me like before I can like get to my cheek. Yeah. Exactly. Like the the tone. Right. You get the tone of a notification. Um, Naps me out. And uh, definitely you can prime your discipline. Uh, also, uh, I believe uh, Bunker, you can prime your discipline. Um, and I think that's probably like, what's the reaction? Like, it, it, you know, you're, you stop, you get the notification. What do you do next? What's the next beat? Like I, I look at the notification on like one hand mm -hmm. that I have pulled up with like the display over it. And I think my reaction is I pull up my other hand to have like the, the map with all of like the electrical network overlays mm -hmm. of what's the quickest path for me to get myself there digitally. Right. And I think it's like you find that it resolves <clears throat> And then I want to ask Steven, how is Ezekiel already on the scene and like infiltrating the situation? Like, you know, like at some point in this building that we see the plan of, Ezekiel's already there. I think that comes from the contact with the uh, little girl. I mm -hmm. think that's pinned. Her. And as we see her taunting um, Everest and Bunker, I think we see basically 
the little girl's there and then the light kind of the the screen kind of gets brighter and then all of a sudden it's the you know it zooms in and zooms back out and it's the heads up display with the pin there yeah and ezekiel steps into the building Okay, so you step into the building. I think that's good. Like, we get the shot of you stepping in. I want to, like, cut to an action shot of, like, Everest doing something to deal with this situation <laughs> that they're in, or that, that uh, she is in. If we're... I, I'd like to hit on the competency yep. and, and, like, uh, smile at the little girl and, like, literally even just say, like, Ezekiel, you're almost here. <laughs> and then, like, throw open the doors and... Uh, oh, jeez, I don't know. Maybe... It, would it be possible that I'd have, like, an EMP uh, grenade or something that would, like, just cut up, cut a few people off or something like that? Sure, sure. You could definitely try that. Uh, I think it would maybe be a... Hmm. Sounds like so it's an EMP grenade, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe a. Fight, I kind of want to say. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's because it's like you if you open the door, there's like a bunch of people with like knives and like various <laughs> implements just like ready to murder you. Right. So like you're going to have to like push them off and then throw the grenade or something like that. Uh, sure. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. Let's get a roll. Sounds good. Da -da -da. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice. Uh, so you have a uh, one in fight, right? Yes. Okay. So that means that you've got two. Uh, you've got one complication and two extra degrees of success, right? Uh, yes. So I think the the complication um, is probably that you go to throw and because of like these people pressing down on you um like you can't throw it as far as you had, had hoped to but how does this end up working out in your favor uh i think i do the the weak toss and then shoot it myself so oh, it, yeah it's like it, push back pull out the gun shoot and then it like goes flying backwards and deploys and it's like that like boom, as like this you know emp burst goes out and like all of the people just start like freaking out right like they're they're all just like uh you know in a seizure basically um like dropping the knives and like falling to the ground and stuff like that uh so what's the next advantage you get out of that um Ooh, maybe it's the whatever Ezekiel is facing. He has like a little bit of a head start on it. Like it kind of like mm. makes that pathway through them to to make a couple extra seconds for Ezekiel or something. Right, right. Okay, yeah. So like it's maybe like Ezekiel, you were running towards them to come and rescue them. But like now you see that the immediate pressure is gone. And you're able to reroute to track the girl's signal uh, more closely, right? Um, so what does that look like? Or actually, you know what? Maybe we get an assist here, right? We get an assist here from uh, Eamon, right? Because Eamon, she's been doing the digital tracking. Mm -hmm. And then that could be like working together with Ezekiel here. So, so uh like, are you, like, zooming in on the signal of the girl giving instructions, something like that? Yeah, that would work. Or if there's, like, doors I can hold closed or... Mm, uh, yeah, oh, cool. I love that. I love that. Yeah, it's like there's, like, people inside of these rooms in the restaurant, like, beating at yeah. the doors and stuff. But, like, they, they keep it all open. Now. Yeah. Okay, and we, like, see that to the side. So what are you, what are you doing, Ezekiel? So I think Ezekiel steps in and um, you see this elevator come down and start to open mm -hmm. and it's just full of guards. But Ezekiel steps into the stairway 
and crouch, you know, steps into the center instead mm-hmm. of starting to head up. He steps kind of into the center where the open area is yeah, and crouches down. And then you see his uh, cyber legs activate mm-hmm. and he starts basically stepping from, you know, from stair step to stair step up on the outer edge yeah. to come up to the level of the building where they need to be. And I think when he gets up to the level where uh, Everest and um, Bunker are. So he, is this, is this using, you using sneaky cyber ninja here? Uh, um, I don't think it's necessarily sneaky. I think you're seeing power here. Okay. Um, and then, you know, goes to open the door, and I think the door's locked down, and he just rips it off. Okay, so that this sounds like a... Um... Hmm. Maybe I think I would say infiltrate role. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. I got a one. Okay, so you're but we gotta check what specifically you got. So okay, so you got one plus and then the rest were were blanks. Uh so Okay, so you have uh, a two and infiltrate. Two, two and infiltrate. So that means that you do fail. Um, uh, however, there are no additional complications, um, and so it's. So I think this is. Um, you okay? It's you rip the door off of its hinges, right? And then we get this shot of like um, from the side, like in the stairwell, uh, Ezekiel like ho- holding the door and just goes flying backwards uh, against the w- far wall of the stairwell and like falls down onto the next uh, set of steps. And then like from a, like from that si- same side, uh, we see uh, Rain step into the picture and look down at Ezekiel. Um, and uh, now I think I want to go to Bunker. You're among all of these paralyzed people. Your good friend, uh, <laughs> Everest, she, she actually didn't kill all of them. How is that looking for you? I'm very surprised and delighted. Um, so the the girl is gone, right? The little I, girl. I think that if you look down the hallway, you can see her at the end, and she's waving at you. <laughs> of course. Um, I think I'm gonna kind of look stunned a little bit and be like everest i didn't know you had it in you but we gotta go and chase after the the girl we get a shot of me like uh looking at my bandolier and it's clear that i just grabbed the wrong one (laughs) (laughs) nice (laughs) so (laughs) um uh, so, so I, I think we'll cut back to uh, Eamon. Uh, I think you probably see the signal of the girl uh, near uh, Ezekiel's location, and like, there's something about like their status that 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 shows that they're they're in big trouble. Uh, so, what what are you gonna do to help them out? I think what I jump to is um, the like. What's the like the emergency systems in the building? Okay. So things like the um, like triggering the sprinkler system and the fire alarm and. Yeah, maybe there's like uh, oh, like um. Maybe there's like uh, fire extinguisher robots 
uh, in in the building, funny. like that, like I'm not all, thinking futuristic like, enough. <laughs> vertically down the stairwells uh, that you could you could you could bring in, um, and like they they start to like all like crawl down. Like we see like these 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 grates open at the top of the stairwell, and then like these like little fire extinguisher robots, like almost like spiders, like start to crawl down uh, into the stairwell towards Goodness. lower level. Um, okay. Now, I think uh, Ezekiel, this is probably a good point to engage the uh, fight mechanic. And then we'll, I think we're, we've got what, a uh, half hour left? Is that correct? Uh, an hour and a half, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, an hour and a half. Okay. Awesome. So, yeah. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let's plow on. Let's do the fight mechanic. Uh, let's give it a try. Okay. Um, so, we will uh, go over to roll 20 and just do this over here, I think. So the way this works is um, you first are going to, we're gonna draw four cards from the deck. So this is the fight deck and we'll deal uh, four cards to all or no wait to um actually but do we do we need to deal them i think so yeah deal four cards um and i all players will get everybody will get a card that wouldn't be good <laughs> i i will get them i guess i'll put them down um Okay, so here we go. So you're gonna have to zoom in on them. Put them over here. And zoom in. Okay, so we got forearm hook, straight punch, neck chalk, and bear choke hold. So the next thing we're going to do um, is you're going to roll uh, 4DF. So roll, roll your dice. Okay. Uh, so you got uh, one plus and no minuses. Uh, so you're going to assign one die to eat. Like you're going to put the cards in the uh, order you like and assign one uh, die to each card. Does the color matter? Uh, color does not matter. Color does not matter. Um, and it's left to right uh, is the order. And I'll go and get the specific information on the fights. So how does that look? Just left to right? Yeah, left to right. Uh, so forearm hook, bear chokehold, neck chop, straight punch. And where do you want to put your plus? So I'll put it uh, on straight punch. Straight punch. Okay, good. Like it. Um, all right. So uh, if you have a, a minus, I believe that is where the opponent will uh, get the advantage on you. Um, but just want to be clear. Ah, repeat until someone is out of the fight or flees. Okay, got it. Like it. Okay, so let's um, go through this then. We'll play it out. So here we go. So, okay, so this starts out um, this fight starts out and it's like, I think probably Ezekiel like throws the door off of them. Uh, and rain walks over towards you. Um, and you're going to go with the forearm hook, right? So how, how does that look? Like, how are you going to come at her with that? So I think first thing that happens is I think uh, like a silent alarm is tripped and you see in the heads up display, you know, rain engaged location, Ooh, that kind mm -hmm. of thing to right. the other members of the, of the group. 
Yeah. And um, then I think that while that's happening, uh, Ezekiel will step forward and throw this forearm hook at Rain <clears throat> almost as a distraction. Okay. And yeah, and it's like she's just like moving to the side, right? And like grabs your arm. Uh, then you're going to go for the bear choke hold. How do you try to pull that on on her? Um, so as she ducks to the side, that's whenever I step to the side to try to um, grab a hold of her. Yeah, so you're like trying to get your arm around, and it's like I think she she moves like under your arm and like comes back around. Your, she's facing you. Then you go for the neck chop. That's right. How, how, so what does that look like? So I think that whenever she does that, um, she's got a hold of my right arm. Yeah. And it disjoints at the elbow. Okay. And it turns backwards as I continue that swing around to hit her in the neck. Yeah. And I think, like, she ducks it, comes up, and then that's, like, when your straight punch connects with her. So what does that look like? Yes, and I think that's whenever the uh, she ducks the neck chop and... Uh, comes back up, and as she's coming back up, that elbow re-engages, and the punch comes straight out to to connect. Yeah, and where's that like hitting? Where's that hitting her? Do you think? Oh, I, I was looking at the the card, which is a picture of a face. So right. In yeah. The face. Okay. Great. So straight punch to the face, and I think it's like the the fist comes away, and we see like that there is like sort of parts of the 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 skin on her, her cyber body that have been like kind of torn away a bit. Uh, and you can see like the, the like a kind of uh, plastic and stuff like that that's underneath. Um, and maybe like a little bit of like the mechanisms around her eye or something like that. Um, and uh, she, she stares at you and, and she says, uh, well, that's, that's not bad. Upgrades. And uh, um, she smiles, and I think we're going to go to the next next uh, round of the fight. So I'll get rid of these cards, and we'll go and do one more. And Kyle, yeah. um, just so Thanks. you know, too, it's it's totally up to you if you want to do this or not. It depends on like the flow that you want. I've seen it both ways, but. Um, Basically, what you can do with the fight is you do it just like you did. You deal it. The player sets it all up. Minuses are when they get hit. Pluses are when they yeah. land hits. Zeros is nothing. Yeah. And then using that information, the uh, player can narrate the entire fight. Like right. When they get hit, when they miss, all that kind of stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, like, um, I'm totally down for that. I was just trying to, like, run through it uh, once to, to help uh, scaffold. So, totally. uh, yeah, so make another roll there. Yeah, I did. Okay, uh, so, right. So, okay, you got two minuses and two blanks. So, for each minus, we're going to deal out two more cards. Or deal out one more card. I like this too because it it kind of makes sense for the fiction too, right? She's like not bad. <laughs> but yeah, she's and like... then bad <laughs> comes back. Okay, so where do you want to put those minuses? Like put them in um, uh, put put the the four that we originally drew in an order, and then choose where the minuses go, and then we'll put the the uh, extra cards with those minuses. Yeah, so I think I'll start with boxing, and then uh, mm. I think she comes back with sacrifice. Flow, and then okay, we'll the, and then we'll do this knife kick to the shin. Um, I think that happens um, at the boxing cross, which okay. is why I'm on the ground to do the throw. Right. Her fist. Um, um, and I like the hammer fist is at the very end. Okay. Awesome. I like it. <laughs> Nice. Okay, so uh, you are now like now you can you can narrate what happens. Um, so whenever you have the minus there, and like it's like you try to do the thing on top, but then you get hit with the thing on bottom, right? Right. 
Yeah. So I think that what happens here is she goes, you know, nice. And as he yep. goes, upgrades. She smiles a little bit and steps forward. And he goes for a, a boxing cross. Um, and she uh, hits him in the shin with her foot, which takes him down. And then she goes for him, and he does this uh, throw over, you know, she leans down and then, you know, follows through on that throw and goes for a punch. But she's not there anymore. She's moved out of the way mm -hmm. quicker than he can punch. And whenever she moves out of the way, he then goes for a, a strike to the neck. Yeah. And instead, she just punches him to the ground. Yeah. So, I. Uh... What does uh, it look like when Ezekiel takes a bad punch from a cyborg? Um, I think you actually see Crunch. Um, in, and I think she actually takes this hammer fist and hits in the right arm. Mm. And you see, like, uh, it kind of start to hang limply mm -hmm. and uh, fold in on itself where she's hit. Yeah, like the 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 like the the plating and is buckling and like the fibers are kind of messed up, um, and uh, so do you want to resist this with stress? Um, I think the, what we described narratively is um, uh, a consequence. Yes, so you can always choose to resist the consequence with stress, uh, and if you don't have any stress left, then you will take harm. You'll take okay. a take a consequence. So you um, can you can describe like how uh, how you get out of it if you like. Yeah. So let's actually try and resist it with uh, with stress. What okay. Does so that look like? uh, that physical not? or mental? It would be physical. Okay. All right. So what do you do physically to get away from that hammer fist, like breaking that breaking that arm? Um, I think this is uh, coming in underneath where she is. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of getting closer to her um, so that she can't get that force behind it. Yeah. And so well, like we see like the, the, the pavement on the ground, like crack as the fist comes down. Right. Um, okay. So uh, maybe we'll go last round here. Um, Is that too stress because it's two minuses? Uh, I think that's how that's supposed to work. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They're pretty, you know, the, least, the villains are villains are pretty strong. So at least when I was playtesting. So hopefully, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not super. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and this is the so you got plus blank blank minus. Okay, so where does the plus go? Where does the minus go? Yeah, there's so many cards. So many cards. <laughs> it took me hours to get this deck together. <laughs> so, um, can you uh, deal me another card for the minus? Oh, sorry. Yep. No problem. Here you go. Arm lock. So I like this. So what happens is um, um, so she's landed a, uh, or she's gotten me kind of a weaker point and um, Ezekiel um, tries to push her actually I'm going to swap these two. Um, Ezekiel steps into her and gets close enough to, you know, hit her neck, but he can't get, they can't get enough force behind it um, to do too much damage, but I think that's where the plus is. And then okay. um, tries to th throw her to the ground, um, and that doesn't really work, and then tries to kick her in the knee to weaken that, mm. and um, then grabs uh, her elbow to try and wrench that arm out, and that's whenever she reverses that uh, elbow throw into a lock and puts him in an arm lock. Right. So, like, it's probably like the uh, like her arms kind of doing a similar thing to what you did earlier, like where the the joint is like doing some weird mechanical uh, stuff that like the 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 
arm wrench doesn't work, right? The elbow just like is like, oh yeah, I'll just go around the other way, right? Um, grabs you, puts you in the arm lock, uh, and so uh, you're gonna you can resist mentally, perhaps if you can think of a way. Otherwise, you're going to take a consequence. I kind of want to take a consequence. Okay, so this, this is the damage we were talking about before that's starting to look like you know. It's dented, the arm's dented yeah. in, and it's kind of exposed. Right. Yeah, yeah, like extra stress. It's like starting to kind of give way under the lock. Um, and uh, I think that at this point, uh, Rain looks up and sees, like, all of the fire extinguisher bots coming down uh, towards her. Um, and, uh, like, kicks Ezekiel to the ground um and then uh probably i think i think she pulls like a line like right out of her side like pulls up her shirt pulls a line right over her side hooks it onto the guardrail and just like drops straight down uh in between the stairwells and is like falling all of these stories down uh, and then the the line uh, goes taut, gives way, uh, and um, all that's like left at the bottom of the stairwell is like the rope that's been that's been left there. It's just like the, the line's been separated and left on the ground. And we probably see which of the, which of you like finds it and like looks at it and is like shit. She got away. I like. Just because I'm so angry and full of the turmoil and everything, I like throw a grenade down there too, just in case, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like where she's like going down, and I'm just like, there's a one percent chance, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, right. Like you like get to the door, open the door, throw the grenade, uh, and and it's like we we hear it detonate at the bottom, but like all all that's left is the rope there. Um, and uh okay cool um Maybe the, that little kid's probably staring at me from like the corner of the the camera or something right yeah. ominously <laughs> totally totally all right great um so let's uh let's let's continue then um she got away and now can go to the next scene. So the characters are shaken out of downtime. We did that. Characters are put on the defensive. I think maybe what happens is um, when You are all at the um, the hotel or this this train station, right? It was a train station that you were at uh, with all these restaurants and stuff in it. While you're all there, um, there is a attack on your headquarters, right? Um, Jorman Gunder goes like all in attacking the headquarters. And you have been distracted. You can't be there to defend. Um, and uh, I think that we get like shots of sort of, you know, Lambda section mooks fighting it out with uh, like each other as like the hacking is like infiltrating the building. Um, and like, I think that there are, there are like some of the mooks are like um, picking up like data chips and like drives and stuff out of the building and just like walking outside into the street and like using like broadcasting to like we see in sort of like AR or something like all of this like classified information that lambda section is holding right like so there's chaos inside the building people are fighting like these hacked 
uh, employees or operatives of Lambda Section are spreading away, spreading the information everywhere, all this like dirty secrets. Um, and we see like Blake uh, and a few other uh, operatives inside the building, like pinned down fighting. And, and uh, she's like, um, get the hell back here. What do you, what were you even doing over at that train station? I think uh, Aemon is there, right? Yeah, there probably were, be were... with. Oh, right, because you were Blake just jacked in, right? So yeah. you, you were probably with uh, Blake. Blake, yeah, and yeah. And, 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 I, and so instead, She's it's just berating me. <laughs> yeah, berating you and telling you to get everybody else back here, right? So it's like piling, or it, you know, it's going for the helicopter, like running for the helicopter, and then the helicopter just like blows up right in front of you. Um, and like, you know, all the shrapnel is like flying at you. There's the smoke. Um, and um, I guess like what other what other aircraft are you going to commandeer here? What, what's your alternative? Oh, what's something super pedestrian? Uh, it's, time, uh, it's time to have a cyber street car, man. This is your time for a Ferrari. <laughs> oh yeah. I guess. I mean, I guess it could be something cool. But you, you say street car. I think trolley, not <laughs> not Ferrari. <laughs> okay, it's a illegal train street car. <laughs> train station, right? So it's like more like a like a bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, like it could be like a train though, right? Like see so like it's like we yeah. see the group like go down onto the concourse, get on the train, and then at the same time, uh maybe it's like um Eamon is hacking the train system and we just like see like all of the the schedule signs everywhere like going like out of service out of service out of service and like all of the train lines are opening up and the 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 train is just like everybody's like hanging on with like their cyber arms onto like the um bars because the train is just going at like full tilt and it's like like shaking back and forth as it's moving down the tracks as you're speeding back downtown um and uh, so I think um, this would be a good place. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> the train is speeding down these tracks. And then it's like the um, vent, like from the AC uh, bus open. And uh, maybe um, rain is dr like drops down into the train car with the rest of you and has um, like a like a machine gun on her um, and is is just gonna like lay down some fire on the group. So what do you do? Uh, I I think bunker like tears a piece of the roof and like bends it down to block the bullets. Okay. I like it. Is is this going to involve your cyber punch? Yeah, I think it has to. Like I can you punch work? up and, and grab like a yeah. railing and just exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, not today. <laughs> um, All right. So, um, Cool. Well, that's an automatic success, right? It's because you you spent your um your trademark. Okay. Uh, the, we see like the bullets like boom, 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 like all against the the metal plating. And I think it leaves room where the seats are so that Everest can go around if she wants to. Right. So you're gonna try to get the drop here, Everest. Yes. Um, I think. After that happens, as soon as maybe I wait for the reload, and mm -hmm. that's when I uh, lay my fire down. On okay, and then, like, do we get? Are is this going to be using gun gun fu? Yes. So well, do we, do we get the flashback of you training with Rain, uh, uh, doing something similar. Yeah. Well, it, it'll depend on what I roll. I, th uh, I think the thing with the training, though, is you actually have to say it in advance if you're going to try to use it. 
Oh, oh. Um, I think that's how that works. Uh, I think that's just discipline priming it, isn't it? Uh, no, because both the um training is a flashback, right? Yeah, the training is a flashback. Um, oh, before a roll, yeah, 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 yeah right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so totally, yeah, we we get the part where she's teaching me how to take out somebody who's like unloading on like civilians in a crowd or something like that mm -hmm. and like having to wait for the reload so that they have like no chance and uh you know doing the whole like oh it's got to be the whole uh what is it S um smooth smooth is steady steady is fast or whatever right from shooter <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um and then like wherever we are standing on this uh, field with the targets and stuff around us and obviously there's got to be really sad music playing uh then we cut back and we're standing in the exact same positions um and we yeah. see who's like who's like better now right and in the flashback i'm sure she wins every time of course of course <laughs> so okay so let's see that roll this is gonna be a shoot cool do i still have it okay. hoping i still had it copy pasted but i would not Ooh, okay. So you got uh, two successes. You have a one in shoot, right? Yeah, but then the the training, training. allows me to re-roll a single minus result. Okay. So let's see if it even helps. <laughs> one. Yes. Okay, so you got three successes. So I I think I think definitely one. So there's a complication. The right. complication is that, like, you're, like, in her head, right? That's what you okay. think, that, like, you've trained with her. You know what she's going to do. The <laughs> yeah. thing is, you go to act, and she does something completely different. Like, she oh. does it, like, it's like, it's like we have, like, the scenario in Everest's head where she's, like, planning it out. Like, this is what how it's going to go down, and then it doesn't turn out like that at all. And, oh, like, like, it's, like, the... a surprise like uh the sherlock movies right where he likes is planning the moves and he's like you know cut to upper jaw to all this <laughs> it's yes. not like it at all <laughs> yeah it, it it it's like she doesn't move in the same direction at all but that actually works to your advantage and it's actually like probably she gets majorly fucked up by this because you got what three three <laughs> successes right so you have two yeah. de two extra degrees of success so what does that look like uh, one of them, I just wanted to be cool. So I think, uh, I think she does reload in time, like halfway through the volley, mm -hmm. and I think we get that tense moment where the bullets of her car, of course, are hitting each other, right? Because yeah, yeah. we've got the, our processors are that good. Yes, yes, totally. And then so. after it, when it frames, it looks like we get the first like ten seconds where nobody moves or whatever. Yeah. And then afterwards. Um, if if she's is she is she dead, or um, I don't like I could see that uh she like yeah maybe maybe that's well so does that does that feel like success to you or does that feel like failure what what, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. how what which one is more uh more like sort of success of a success to you interesting <laughs> uh I think the success. Oh, that's interesting because of my inner turmoil, right? Like my whole thing is like, I need to put them down. Yeah. So yeah, I think success is doing that thing is, is uh, at least attempting to kill her. Even if I don't, it's me thinking that I killed her. So I think maybe that's when like, you know, it's pretty gruesome and like parts of her start like exploding and there's like the anime blood sprays. Text. Yeah, it's like uh, you've got like these like AP rounds that are going through her and just like tearing off parts of her cyber body, right? Um, and and what um, what kind of gun do you think you were using there? Ooh, it's got to be whatever was in that uh, 
flashback. Oh, I know in the flashback, she was like, you shouldn't use a, I don't know, something stupid, like a desert eagle for this kind of thing, because it only holds X amount of bullets. And I'm like, I only need this amount of bullets. Right? <laughs> and she, she's, she always beats me in the flashback, but this time the desert eagle is like more powerful. Right. So like the last bullet maybe collides, but mine goes through it. <laughs> right. <go>. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah so so like we get the scene of like her like blown back like a big chunk of her torso is ripped away uh and and she just like falls onto the ground on the in a speeding rocking train car um yeah slow motion for sure uh and she's she's lying on the ground like very very messed up uh so what are you gonna do and I was, and I also, this is the thing that, like, she didn't do what I expected. Mm -hmm. So maybe the hesitancy is there where I'm like, maybe this isn't my master or something like that, you know? Yeah, like, right. Like, you're like looking at your gun, like, looking at the smoke coming out of the barrel, and like, you know, everybody else runs past you, but then you're just like standing there looking exactly. shocked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so what do the rest of you do? Like, I, I think this would be a good opportunity to see something out of uh, out of, of bunker, right? Because you, you're the you're the you're the doctor here, right? Well, and I was imagining that I was like trying to patch up Ezekiel mm -hmm. uh, as well at this point, right? Um, so as soon as I hear like these sounds of you know gushing blood, which I've heard hundreds of times before, I like barrel through this barricade that I made and come out the other side and see, you know, the clearly like decimated body. And, yeah, and it's like uh, Everest standing over her, right? Like the, the thing f falls down. We see Everest standing over her like dying body. And it's like, Oh shit. Yeah. And Everest <laughs> is totally holding the gun, you know, like, should I shoot her again or not? Um, so I, I think I run up and kind of just start the, normal CPR stuff and um, say like, Eamon, Eamon, can you get here? Can you, can you get into her? Oh, you like trying to like, like put like a probe in to like hack? Yes. Like, I, yeah. Help I me stabilize were, her. I thought you were a doctor. This isn't going to, this isn't going to do jack shit for her. She already had a cyborg body. We could still save her. Like I just like have this incredibly conflicted look on my face because like I'm looking down at what appears to be the body of Rain, mm -hmm. yeah, and like torn apart, and I'm just like, fine, and I just like you just see my hand like shove into like the side of her neck. Right. And that, like, the complicated, like, my fingertips, like, folding back and then just, like, the wires connecting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and I I think this is, this is me doing my trademark here. Okay. Awesome. Yes. I like that. You're brain burrowing. So now I think this is the point where you actually encounter... Um, for the first time in like a totally unambiguous way, uh, Alexis, right? Mm -hmm. Cause, uh, rain is not there, right? Yeah. Like rain is just not there at all. This is somebody completely unexpected that you've, you're starting to interact with. Um, so, so, so it's basically like your worst nightmare, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good like, boy. It's definitely hitting that inner turmoil, right? Like, Oh shit. Yeah like <laughs> is it start with like a mirror like it at first just looks like uh Ammon? like it's just like they're looking at themselves or something that because that's your inner turmoil right <laughs> it's it's like that the, the 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 deeper i go into someone or a system it's kind of more it's more like it's almost like ego loss mm-hmm where I, I start losing track of who I am. Mm -hmm. I go too deep. 
Um, yeah, and it's like you lose your bearings even more because this is like not what you expected to get yourself into. Yeah, so like I think going in, I was worried that oh, if I dive into rain, like that's super emotionally messy, and that's gonna like what if I like absorb part of rain into me and that's like weird but no 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 no, way worse <laughs> and i think what it like what you do see is actually rain torturing um alexis mm -hmm. right because this is like you know the moment when alexis thought she was going to die previously and had to do something desperate she's like revisiting it as she's yeah. like on the verge of death again right and it's that perfect intersection of it our the our connection to each other is through rain right yes yeah but she she's you know rain is out there on the outside um so you obviously are going to get like information about who Alexis yeah. is, all that kind of stuff. Um, and what's the sort of like dramatic beat that this, this cuts on the scene? Sorry, what was that? You what's the dramatic the beat that this scene cuts on? Like where, where, like we see this torture scene of, of rain, like, you know, um, using various sort of like probes and, and, and digital means to try to get get in Alexis's head. And this is like something that you would be fairly familiar with because it's like something that Lambda Section does. Uh, but what's what's the beat where it turns and we, we cut to the next scene? What if, may I make a suggestion? Yeah, of course. Sure. What sure. if this is basically, we see this torture process that Rain is doing on Alexis and it we then we see an overlay where it's uh alexis torturing rain and taking over her ghost and then we come out and it kind of uh mimics you know the torture that we were seeing um uh it's kind of presented on screen overlaid with the rain's body you know starting to leak and squirt and you know, mm. go completely away. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, so it's like the the sort of digital presence, the memories, and the immediate scene of 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 of, of uh, trauma. Right. Um, go ahead. I, I think I like. I, I really like this image, and I think the the way that it actually like cuts out mm -hmm. is maybe is. Uh, Eamon, um like snapping out of the connection mm -hmm. and just like screaming bloody murder like now Eamon is getting tortured right like, right just like directly feeling all of this yeah and is, is it like um does like somebody like uh catch her uh I feel like since Bunker's there, he probably yeah. Bunker like, was right there. Yeah, probably like uh, doses her or something. Right, right. Mm, I like that. It's just like hey, hey, hey. Yeah. So, okay. So I, I think we're we're uh, so how are we doing for time here? We've got what forty five minutes left. Is that correct? Yeah. Something okay. Like that. All right. Um, I think uh, we've you know face the villain right um but it so i can see this going two ways just at the kind of like meta level one is like you've done the thing you've captured alexis but we could also like totally have the the ghost in the shell thing where like you bring alexis's cyber brain into the institution uh and then it's like she starts to like hack everything and get out right and then you go to the the climactic scene. Um, so I think that's one way we could go uh, for sure. Um, it would be kind of be like on the defensive and then on the offensive and then on the defensive again, but I think it could still work out because it's just so, so classic. <laughs> for, uh, goes to the show. Yeah. Uh, Especially yeah. after like, they're always like 
so smart that it's almost like um omnipresent or something right yes it's, it's like, like, oh, like you a, murdered me <laughs> yeah and it's like the cyber brain alexis's cyber or like rain cyber brain i guess but now containing alexis is like in a vat like and there's like lab techs like working and we can see like signs all through the building of like struggle like uh you know gunpowder marks bullet holes where like fighting had happened inside of the Lambda section headquarters, but like there's still techs working on this because it's like number one priority to figure out what's going on. Um, so I think, um, yeah, I we wouldn't, go ahead. I wouldn't mind another bio break soon too. Yeah, I, I, I totally feel that. Let's do that. Let's let's go for uh, five minutes and then we'll sort of like uh, conclude things and hopefully have some time for for wrap up. Okay. Joshua, you got that sad music playing in the background? <laughs> I do. This entire time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I hadn't brought it up yet. I was imagining that uh, scene on the train in the um, Cowboy Bebop movie. Oh, Ooh. yeah. It was, for me, partially that and partially uh, the uh, train scene from Persona 3. Um <laughs> uh, I, I like that this is 10 hours uh this youtube video i know yeah i was what, just like what 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 what's the 10 hour video oh it's in the chat it's the ghost in the shell uh night stalker uh track but looped for 10 hours oh okay oh. nice yeah so it's, some it's sweet just in, sad music yeah it's very sad and i have i've had it going on the entire time uh, since I, I started playing it when we reached the uh, the waves place. <laughs> oh, it's very oh. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, I had a thought I wanted to interject and see if this fits. Yeah. Um, if we're gonna take the cyber brain back and like do some work on it and have it totally flip on us, mm -hmm. then um, I think it'd be cool to have one of those scenes where like the security guard on the first floor like looks up. And the little girls like outside, yeah, walks in, and his you know like 
brain explodes or whatever, and she just like keeps oh, walking. Oh yeah, and... It'd be so good if she like walks up and like looks at him and and uh, maybe like um, maybe, it, maybe it, like it's like him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's like she like pulls out her deck of cards and she says like pick a card. And it's like he's like oh, and, like his head's like involuntarily moving towards the card and like picks it and then it's just like the back of his brain just like blows out um yes yeah nice um so like i think we also see the next shot it's like everybody is together like analyzing the brain right like you're, you're all there uh along with uh <clears throat> along with your co uh blake yeah uh and like blake's probably like uh, like some evidence of having been in a fight Right. So I think Blake is actually getting worked on, as is Ezekiel. Mm. And does Ammon need some, you know, we're all there in the med bay. Uh, yeah, right. That makes sense. Totally. Uh, and like, Blake's giving directions from, like, a, like a service uh, bay, basically. Um, and uh, who's, like, standing right up next to the, the brain in the jar? I think it's not Amen. Right. So where do you think, think Amen is? is like back in safe distance? Yeah. Okay. Um, right now. So do you think it might be um, who do you think it might be Everest? Yeah. Yeah, so you're, like, standing looking at the brain, and, like, you can see, like, uh, there's, like, a bunch of consoles. We have, like, screens, and there's, like, the techs, like, working, and they've got their, like, their weird finger things going. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, like, some of them are, like, jacked into machines and stuff, and we can see, like, images on the screens of, like, stuff that Alexis would have uh, seen and known, and, like, it's probably, this is, like, where we get some of her backstory, right, where it's, like, how she used to be a cyber contractor and got like fucked over by the system. Uh, and there's like images that are getting pulled up of like in the news of, of, of uh, like in the New York times and stuff of like this big scandal um, of her having leaked information. Um, and then like the manifesto that she released and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, I think that um yeah the new new york times yes <laughs> the neo new york, the neo york times um <laughs> uh, <laughs> and and like yeah i think it's like blake gets up from like the service bay like it's like her her arm is like still being like worked on and and like there's like panels open and stuff but she like walks over and like looks at the brain and like looks over the tech and says um how contained is she? Um, and uh, the text like looks up and like we see like weird like it's got like one of those like weird vision uh, or like a like VR goggle type things on um, and there's like a camera on it that like pivots over to look at her um, and uh, they say like um, uh, well it's it's perfectly secure and uh and then at, at that point, like their head explodes, right? Like it just like blows out. <laughs> um, and we see like Blake getting covered in viscera, right? Like like you know, like that sort of like cyborg fluid that like is is, is all over. And and it's just like, oh, it looks like that. And um, like the alarms start going off in the building, right? Um, and I think that it's yeah, like definitely some robocop vibes for sure and like it is i i think that there's probably like a i think this is a good point to introduce like some kind of like mech or like large like you know like armored tank walker kind of thing into the scene that's just like blowing through the wall and like you know i think we we get the the shot of um of uh oh it's probably going to be like everest and um bunker looking over at the like armored tank 
uh, it's probably a walker to, to keep with that Robo Robocop uh, vibes, right? Like, just rips through the wall, looking, staring both of you down, like the arm like comes up and it's like there's a there's like a rotary cannon on it. Um, and and you're just both just like, oh shit, and like just starts laying down fire, but like very precisely avoiding the cyber brain, right? Like there's this like chaos, things blowing up, and there's like absolutely unharmed around the cyber brain. Uh, so what do you do? I was thinking it'd be a good time to do the the real death thing, but maybe after some other people mm -hmm. um, do things. I, I don't know. Yeah, that, that yeah. After maybe after some other people do the, something, that'd be cool as like a finisher. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll do something. Yeah. Um, so Ezekiel is, you know, I think that he's being worked on. Hmm. And, you know, while all this was going on, and the walker steps steps into the room, and there's still med bots kind of working on that arm that's been crushed. Mm -hmm. And it steps into the room, and he gets up and kind of rips the arm out from the med bots. So it's got, like, wires and stuff hanging off of it and stuff that are kind of sparking. And he... Uh, you see the active... The active... His active camouflage go on? Yeah. So yeah. the and then that's whenever the walker starts to spray everything down, and you see this distortion with the sparks from the wires, you know, kind of step up behind the walker, mm -hmm. and that's whenever he's going to set off his EMP pulse. Yeah, this is like a military grade EMP pulse that's directional and um, that kind of stuff. He's going to set it off. I think it's lo located in his hands, so he can direct it, and he sets it off on the walker. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a like very much like you know a like Tai Chi press kind of thing, right? Like, and this, the wave comes out, and I think we do get that scene for a moment of like the little girl sitting on top of the tank and like looking at you, and then looking shocked and just like getting blown away as like the the tank goes like dead, and like all the lights and like all the monitors and everything down the hallway just like all just turn off, right? Um, and, and we get this flickering effect now in the room where like half of the room still has power and the lights are kind of sputtering and the other half is completely dark. Yeah. Yeah, completely. Yeah, that's great. Um, so that that threat has been alleviated. Um, I think that. Ooh. Do we. Do we escalate from here uh, to to get to the climax? Uh, does something further happen here? Like, is it oh, the second wave? Is it the yeah, second the, wave of the guys coming in? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's like um, similar to like the fire bots that we saw earlier, but like they're the like, you know, armed spider bots, like kind of like little tiny, like almost like tachikoma kind of things uh they're just like crawling over the the walker that has been um disabled like through the hole in the wall and like streaming over top of it into the hallway like coming towards ezekiel um and i think that's probably the point where we could cut over to everest right like to deal with this shit <laughs> yeah i kind of even um I wonder if we could complicate the morality by having Blake activate the real death in me to protect her from not dying. Oh, yeah. Nice. Where it's like a company thing where she's just kind of like says the code word and I just kind of just like lose. I'm just like a pilot in, in the body type thing, right? That's right. Like, like we see her emotions she... become very like precise and robotic, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and so what does it look like when you activate the, the real death? Um, I think it looks like, um, there's like a big firefight, the sad music's playing, Everest is like behind something and she yells something that the audience can't even hear because the music is like in a crescendo. Yeah. And then, uh, my eyes kind of like whatever intensity and 
was on my face and stuff just drops away. And then I just like pop out of cover and it goes into like HUD mode and it, it just like targets everybody. And then mm-hmm. it is kind of like uh, the camera spinning around as my arms just move like impossibly fast with the guns. And then it just like, same thing after a few seconds, everybody's heads just like explode. <laughs> it's like all headshots type deal. Yeah, so it's like Ezekiel is standing out by this robot, this giant walker that's been disabled, and like the the little robots are like coming towards them, right? And then it's just like they just all start getting destroyed by your gunfire, right? Um, and and it's like the wave is getting pushed back by just uh, the the hail of bullets that you're laying down, um, and I think that. Um, Eamon, you're probably, like, out of this enough to notice that um, Alexis has not been completely inactive during this time. um, And that she has been using the uplink facilities of the building to upload her virus to the network, right? This is, so th- this is like, it's like, you're probably like in the system, you can notice that this is happening, uh, that, that there's some kind of infiltration going on. So why don't you roll uh, to um, to see if you can uh, get like a, a, an advantageous amount of information about what's going on, like roll, roll a hack. All right. Um, that is not so good. Oh, that's okay. a plus two minuses and a zero. All right, so you have in hack one, is that correct? I have a one. In hack. Okay, so, so you, I guess that's a success. Is a success. Is a success. A success, but two complications. Two complications. Yes. Um. Uh, so, I think it's like you sort of have like the network diagram and it's like showing the hacking inside the building. Like maybe you've been working to, uh, to overcome uh, what's happening. Uh, and then you see that like, wait, why is the, all the activity going for the satellite link? Right. Um, and you see like, like hacking into it. Oh shit. Like this isn't just in the building. This is going like global, right? This is entire like, you know, and it's probably like a thing. Like, if you go back in the movie, you can see like there's like allusions to Bifrost and like you know, like Bifrost Network and stuff on all these panels and stuff that's been mentioned. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, and I think like so that's one conclusion or one complication. This is, this is going global. The other complication is that I think Alexis starts to speak to you. Um, and uh, and she says to you in in your mind, like, um, "Are you sure you really want to stop me?" And I think outside, you just see me like plant a hand on like a deck that's been like torn up by the the gunfire and stuff and the explosions. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I, you take one step further in this network, I am going to destroy you. Yeah. And that, that, that's the, the point where, um, uh, I think she says, um, yeah, like... Would this be a talk hard, or are we past I, I, that? I, I think, you know what, let's, yeah, let's go for a talk hard. Let's, let's see how that goes. I like okay. it. Okay. <laughs> so what do you have in talk hard? I have a one. Okay, so you're yeah. So this is this is actually pretty successful. Um, I think 
so what does it look like? Like, so you, this is what you say to her. Mm -hmm. What is the, what is the sort of um, implication that you're, you're getting across? Like, what is she, what does she need to do to like really avoid being destroyed here? Um, so I, I think it'd be cool if I lean into my saboteur training yeah. on this. And essentially what I'm imagining this looks like is she's in the network and she's about to like get to the satellite or something. Yeah. And there is this like trap in place. Mm. And that's when I confront her and do the hard talk. Like she's hitting this and I'm like, you have made a horrible mistake. Yeah. If you yeah. so much as send one bit over that wire, and I will just be able to shut you down completely. Right. And it's like we can see the diagram, and there's basically like, it's like all of these pathways, but they all like flow into this trap, this bottleneck yeah. you've established, right? Um, and I think like we see um, on the monitors that are like showing the activity of uh, Alexis's cyber brain that like it's all of these like scenes of her captivity when uh, she was in prison for leaking out these secrets. Um, and I think that it's probably the probably what happens is that the screens just start to like wink off. Like she, she, she's just like I, I can't anymore. Like, the, like I'm not gonna do this anymore. And like, basically, she's just gonna go ahead and start to like self destruct her cyber brain because she doesn't want to be a captive again. You know. Um, yeah. So I think this is a pretty good point for um, bunker. Give you an opportunity to act. If, do you want to try to save her or do you want to let this pass? Um, no, I, I think we probably see a nice moment from, from him where he's like staring at the cyber brain mm -hmm. and he's probably like got some of his gear out. Um, you know, like he's totally thinking about it and, um, Everest is in the background doing her thing and everyone's off doing their thing. And he's just like staring down this cyber brain. Like I could take this out of here. I could totally fix the situation. I could put this back in a, in a shell or something. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe instead like he takes his scalpel and just like stabs it right into the, you know, the, the perfect spot at the back of the brain mm. and finishes it off. Um, while it's like powering down. Yeah. Even if it's not, even if it doesn't actually do anything, it's more for him than, <laughs> than for the brain. Yeah. And like, we see the like fluids, like leaking out of the brain into like the containment chamber and like, like spreading. And then that, like they start to go like black and then like that, like covers this, the, 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 the lens, right. The whole shot is taken up with that, like inky uh, black fluid that's been coming out of the brain. Um, and then I think we we probably uh, cut and we get the scene that is like um, it's probably Rain's funeral, like her, like, you know, like giving her a send off, right, as like this great operative, right? They've got the big portrait of her there, uh, like you see in this picture or something, right? Um, and like the group of you at this funeral ceremony, which I think is like probably a thing that is digital. Um, what do you think the scenery looks like um, in this digital space, this kind of like VR space where this, this, this funeral service is being held? Well, there's definitely got to be waves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love it. I think instead like of digital waves. Yeah, I think they're actual like real waves instead of di the digital waves yeah. we were seeing earlier. It's like a projected image, like it was filmed, you know. It's oh, much more yeah. down to earth. 
Yes, I love it. Like, yeah, so it's like, I think it's like you're, we're, we're, we're on like, you know, an island uh, with like lots of like trees and uh, rocks and there's like animals walking around and we've got this like big sort of um, like plaque with Rain's uh, face on it uh, that, that people are looking at. There's, there's speeches being given and like we can see the wind moving, but like none of your hair actually moves like it's, it's like you're in this digital space you're actually like separated from the the um environment it's just like everything's like as if you were in a sterile closed room even though there's nature happening around you um and i guess like who's the one that like lays the reef of flowers down for for rain Let me yeah. Oh, go ahead. I, I I was I was agreeing with Fraser. I think it's probably Amen. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I like that and like it. It's and, like a, a wreath of like white and red carnations or something. That's yeah. kind of this, this mixed metaphor. And it's like when you when you like crouch to place it, like crouch down to place it, we like it. the shot is framed in such a way that it's like you're at a similar height to when you were, you were like sitting across from rain in that other shot before. Um, yeah. And uh, I think that's probably where we cut and end the movie. But the, the ending might even be like the, it, it how people get clued into it being a digital space could be Blade Runner 2049, like mm -hmm. where the rain is coming down and then it like makes it so that the last shot is like, maybe this is like a fake cheek or something like that. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Like the, there's, yeah, there's that like, um, artificial, uh, look to it because it's like this place has been filmed or something in the past and your avatars are just like superimposed on top of it. And like, is it is it like the rain goes like through the carnations? <laughs> That's a pretty good image. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty good. It's like, oh, like e this, yeah, that even this like very sentimental thing isn't really real. Yeah. Uh, cool. I also kind of want to see um, Everest. I'm gonna step forward mm. and pull out that desert eagle and then like toss it on the grave. Oh yeah. 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 Sure, yeah. I like that. Yeah, and like that, but that like is it like also the um oh <sighs> yeah, no, let's let's just go with that. I like it. The two things beside each other on the on the ground there. Yeah. And then like cuts to black and like we get this like lambda image on the on the on the screen, right? <laughs> um cool. Okay. Uh so great. Uh let's um start with sort of evaluation. Uh I I think uh I don't I I I, I want to give you the opportunity to epilogue, even though this is like not in the movie, right? Like maybe there's after credit scenes or something, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. So uh, why don't we why don't we start with um, Chris? Uh, do you see any sort of epilogue uh, stuff happening um, for Eamon? Um, I think the shot that we would see is. I don't, I don't know how it manifests, but um, we see Eamon going about her day and there's some new behavior mm. that is clearly Rain's. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. that it, there's something clearly different about her demeanor yeah. Yeah. That I like absorbed. Or yeah. Like a flip of the hair or something like that. Yeah. And it's like something we've seen in a flashback before, right? Yeah. yeah like like when... in, the, in the office, right? 
the one on one. We had the one on one uh, yeah. after a mission, and it was like this is something that Rain was doing the entire time, and now now I'm doing it. Awesome. So, what about uh, Everest? What do we see from Everest? Um. Well, before I was thinking like maybe Everest even becomes the bad guy, right? Because but now it's like <laughs> everyone's a bad guy. I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Why well, I think it would be something to do with at least um, trying to get the uh, override out, right? Um, mm, maybe going yes. to the manufacturing site or something like that, and like making them remove it or reprogram it or something like that yeah i like that a lot that like you're kind of like covertly trying to subvert the programming they've put on you um yeah, yeah cool um and what about a bunker um i think we have a scene in bunkers like small apartment uh where he's kind of hanging out there deep in thought and um we kind of look over on the couch and there's this dog a uh, small dog you know maybe like 20 pounds that uh that looks up at him like lovingly you know is kind of um breathing softly and lays back down and we can see that the dog is like um it's like a handicapped dog and he's like done some work to the dog to give it its hind legs back mm. um and this is like his his way of trying to make things right you know um and then his his phone goes off and uh he looks at it and it's like got a picture of blake on it and he kind of looks at it and hesitates for just a second and you're not sure if he's going to answer it or not Mm, yeah i love it that's awesome um yeah okay and then finally uh ezekiel we started with ezekiel we're gonna wrap with ezekiel so yeah what's what's what goes on so I think we see Ezekiel um, leaving the office and basically they're pulling on their jacket as they're leaving the office and you see, you know, the new shiny right arm that's like a different color, like I think it's white or something like that as they pull on the jacket and they step out into the rain and start walking down the street and as they walk down the street um, uh, they pull up their hood and kind of hang their head a little bit and you start seeing the heads up display again. Mm-hmm. And as strangers walk by, they see, you know, and it zooms in on a face and then it looks for, does it match the little girl? Mm. And, and a little bit further down, it zooms in on the next face. Does it match the little girl? Right. And you see this Ezekiel is going through this in his head the whole time, looking for that little girl or worried that the little girl will show up again. Yes. Yeah. Like, um, can never really be sure. Uh, I love it. I love it. Cool. All right. So yeah. So let's let's do some uh, qu- uh, evaluation. Uh, uh, so uh, we'll do um, stars and wishes. Um, so you can give. Uh, we'll go around first. Do stars. So give like one uh, uh, positive thing that you enjoyed about the the game or the other players or or myself. Um, and uh, we'll we'll maybe start uh, with. Uh, Chris, yeah, we'll go around again. Yeah. Are we gonna do this uh, on recording? Uh, right. Good point. Let's uh, let's stop the broadcast. Then we'll do that. Um, yeah. Okay. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you did watch, I, I kind of lost track of the broadcast, and thanks for catching that. <laughs> uh, but uh, there will be another video on this channel uh, tomorrow. All systems nominal. So check that out and uh, check out the gauntlet if you have not already, because you can play fun games like this. Bye.